Now that you've conducted your usability test, let's talk about how to interpret the results. The first thing you want to make sure you do is whenever you're setting up your usability test, whether it's remote or in person, whether it's moderated or unmoderated, you always want to record what the user, uh, what the test respondent is doing in the prototype. You want to record their screen, their mouse movement, their clicks, their voice, their, uh, you know, what they do and as they walk through it. And you want to record it. Even if you're live with that person, you want to record it so you can play it back later on and really watch it a, a second, third, or fourth time and really understand what the user is doing uh, as they navigate through. <clears throat> You want to make sure you're measuring completion rates. What, I, what I've said before is you want to keep iterating until you get it to, uh, you know, it, it, people can get through your, your prototype very cleanly. Uh, you want, but you also want to measure time to completion and uncommon navigation paths. So, uh, you, you know, you in, when you design things, you have a good sense of what the most common navigation path would be. To, People get through it, but uh, is it taking them really long, much longer than it should? Are they clicking around, doing extra steps, getting lost, and then ultimately finding it? Or are they, is it really clean and smooth for them? So that's what you want to see. You want to be able to measure that. <clears throat> and you want uh, a reporting software that lets you uh, very quickly understand that information, very quickly see the pass, the time to completion of the pass, the, 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 the flows that they go through, as well as completion rates. If you're in person, uh, or uh, or even if it's uh, remote but it's moderated, uh, you want to make sure you're looking for visual signs of frustration, whether it comes out in their voice or in their their facial expressions. And, and last, you know, if you're asking qualitative feedback uh, after people go through, so questions, type of different types of questions uh, after people go through the prototype, make sure that you segment the feedback based on the user's actions. Okay, so Don't just look at overall information. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have five people go through a test, three people complete the task, two people don't get complete the task. And you want to you, uh, ask a, a qualitative question. What you want to do is make sure you separate out the responses of the three people who said who got through the task uh, as, well from, as well as the people who the two people who didn't get through the task. You want to look at those qualitative feedback uh, very differently, um, because you don't want to make you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Meaning, you, you want to make sure that if if the issue is uh, you know a usability issue and you could find the one spot where those two people got confused, uh, then it feels like by looking at the answers from the three people who got through it that uh, you're on the right path. But you just want to make sure when you're looking at, at qualitative feedback that you separate it out based on user actions and you want software that lets you, that easily lets you separate out uh, the qualitative feedback um, for, uh, for, for based on user actions.